Welcome back to the Packet Lab. Today we're going to take a look at Cisco's Auto Secure feature. Before we get into Auto Secure, let's define hardening. And uh, contrary to the way it sounds, router hardening is not a sexual term. So if somebody says they're busy hardening a router, that doesn't mean they're giving hand jobs to Cisco devices in the data center. Or if they are, they're very confused and should be stopped. What hardening means, or what it refers to, is turning off basically any any um, services that you're not going to be using. So hardening is not specific to Cisco devices or network devices. Um, you can harden a server, you can harden an application. For instance, you can turn off web services on a server, so you know, like IIS or Apache. If you're not using it as a web server, there's no reason to have that open. And the reason you want to do that is because hackers search for exploits like that. They look for an opening, and if you're not using it, go ahead and turn it off. And there's two steps uh, to basic router hardening. Now you can go way deeper in this. There's entire books that are written on how to uh, harden network devices. The first and probably the easiest one and <laughs> often overlooked is to administratively shut down any unused router interfaces. I've seen this in production where you have a, a device that's connected to another device, one of those devices goes away and you just, you know, the, the port goes down, down, you just forget about it. Unfortunately, if you don't shut this down, you do have a port that can be brought back up again. It's actually still up if so, as soon as somebody plugs something in on the other side. So if you had R1 connected to R2, you disconnect R2. That connection R1 is down, down. Sometime later, somebody else comes in and connects R3. Now it's not that hard for them to figure out, you know, what the IP address is on the other side there. They can, you know, check out uh, CDP and they can start sending traffic to your router. So hardening is based on the principle if you're not using it, shut it down. So that goes for uh, router interfaces. Luckily on Cisco routers, that is the default setting. So if you get a Cisco router out of the box, the um, interfaces are shut down by default. So the second of these basic steps is to disable any unused services, and that's what Auto Secure was created to uh, accomplish. The problem with that is that you have to know what you're using and what you're not using for this to uh, to be effective. By default, Cisco routers uh, come with some services enabled, and there's a good reason for a lot of them to be enabled, but to disable something, you have to know that it was enabled in the first place, and secondly, you have to know the command to disable that, and that's where Auto Secure does come in handy, is that it will go ahead and with a single command, you can uh, go ahead and disable these um, services. And there's two methods for automatically hardening your router. Uh, let's take a look at the second one first. Cisco SDM one-step lockdown. Uh, for those of you that don't know, SDM is Cisco's Secure Device Manager, which is uh, basically a web-based front-end. Uh, it's a GUI for configuring and uh, monitoring Cisco devices. And there's a video on uh, Cisco SDM one-step lockdown. We're not going to go over that today. What we will go over is the first of these, and that is, of course, auto-secure. Uh, the auto-secure iOS feature is invoked by issuing the auto-secure command, makes sense, from the CLI. This allows an administrator to lock down the device with a single CLI command. Now, there's two things interesting about that. First of all, um, the auto-secure command, you don't have to be in configuration mode to issue that. It's um, in user enable mode, basically the, the pound sign um, privilege level 15. You don't have to issue a configuration terminal and get into config mode to issue this. The uh, second interesting bit is that it's one command, so if you type in auto secure, it will step you through a dialogue asking you a few questions. Actually, you can issue a variation of this command that won't ask you a damn thing. It will just go ahead and generate a number of uh, configuration lines to disable common services that uh, should not be running in Cisco's wisdom. Those two points bring up two other points you need to be aware of, and those two points kind of speak to two larger security issues. First of all, be careful who you give um, privilege level 15 access to. I know that a lot of places it's you know common just to give the knock or the help desk or some secondary support privilege level 15. Just give them you know the highest level privilege and that way it it lets them do more and supposedly results in less calls for your level 3 support, your administrators. Um, but it also opens the gates to stuff like this where if you don't know what this command is and you're just dicking around on the uh, CLI figuring, you know, I'm not in config mode, I can't break anything, and you issue this, it's going to configure your router and it's going to turn off services. That brings me to the second point. If you see bullet up number two up there says disable any unused services. Well, that's the gotcha is that um, 
Auto Secure does a great job, but Auto Secure does not know if you're actually using a service unless you tell it in the dialogue. And not everything in that dialogue addresses the services that it will shut off. And that'll make more sense when we're actually on the CLI. What I'm trying to say is that you could go in there and issue the auto secure command and disable a service that um, you're actually using and you could lock yourself out of the router. So while auto secure is a great feature, you know, it's one command and you can harden the router very quickly, you've got to be careful with uh, what you're doing there because you could end up locking yourself out. Okay, and the nice thing about the auto secure feature is there's only one command to memorize and that's the auto secure command. As I mentioned earlier, it's going to be issued from enabled user mode. Uh, you don't have to go into configuration mode. It says here, auto secure is valuable to customers without special network operations applications because it allows them to quickly secure their network without thorough knowledge of all the Cisco iOS features. And that's the key, that's why this command exists so that uh, people that don't understand, and I don't mean don't understand, that they don't have a, like they said, a thorough knowledge of all the uh, iOS features can go ahead and give themselves some rudimentary security. This feature eliminates the complexity of securing a router by creating a new CLI, automates the configuration of security features, and disables certain features enabled by default and that could be exploited for security holes. And that's, as we mentioned earlier when we were discussing hardening, that's exactly what this is used for, is to shut down potential security holes. This command takes you through a semi-interactive session, also known as the Auto Secure Dialog. Just as a side note, if you're going to be taking the CCNA security exam, I would probably commit um, Auto Secure Dialog to memory. Cisco likes to create questions um, based on, for lack of a better term, proprietary um, terms. So you may have configured auto secure a million times and not realize that the questions that are being presented to you on the screen are referred to as the auto secure dialog. Just keep that in mind. And by default, it's going to secure the management and forwarding planes. You do have options with this command, so for the um, exam, just remember that by default it will secure both the management and forwarding planes. You can also choose options within the auto, I'm sorry, auto secure command to specify one or the other, to specify either the management only be secured or the forwarding only be secured, but by default both are secured. Okay, and there's a caution here. It says, if your device is managed by a network management application, securing the management plane could turn off vital services and disrupt the NM application support. And that goes back to what I was talking about earlier. While this is made, you know, to be router hardening for dummies, you kind of have to know what's going on here because uh, I said it many times already, it's going to shut off services if you're using those services such as SNMP or, you know, maybe TACX or something like that, and uh, it shuts those off, it's very possible that you could end up locking yourself out of the router. And even if you don't lock yourself out of the router, you might just do something that uh, turns off logging, say, so that you don't get alerts on with certain network events on your router. So that's the boon and the bust of auto secure. Uh, the boon is that it's extremely simple to implement. The bust is that, you know, you kind of still have to know what you're turning off. If you're using it, make sure that you don't turn it off. And really quickly here, there's going to be another slide on the auto secure rollback feature. Basically what this is saying is that if you're in the middle of configuring auto secure, and we'll see that um, auto secure dialog when we're on the CLI, if something happens, um, router loses power, I don't know. If you're running newer code, um, then it won't implement the changes. Whereas if you're using code prior to 12.38, rollback of the auto secure configuration is unavailable. Thus, you should always save the running config before configuring auto secure. I would do that regardless of the code version you're using. Before you issue this command, go ahead and write your configuration to your copy run start.